Hello, brothers of Kappa Kappa Psi, chapter sponsors and director of bands. Welcome to the video and audio walkthrough for the 2023 Fall Information Mailer for Kappa Kappa Psi. My name is Bonko, pronouns he, him, and I proudly serve as the national president for Kappa Kappa Psi National Honorary Band Fraternity. And as you may have guessed in the title of this video, the purpose of this is to make sure that we have both video, visual, and our audio walkthrough in addition to the fall mailer that was sent out on August 18th, 2023. So you're going to see a lot of me sharing my screen, sharing the slides that folks already have access to, and a lot of me reading through the slides. But again, the purpose is to make sure that we have some audio to go along with the slides. So I'm going to be sharing my slides here or my screen here in just a bit. All right, you should now see the first slide or the title slide, which is 2023-2024 fall updates for Kappa Kappa Psi. This was updated on August 17th, 2023. And commonly we refer to this as the fall mailer. The next slide, it's gonna be a video of myself introducing the fall mailer and what it is. So we're, we're going to skip that. You're going to hear a little bit of audio. Um, I'm just going to save myself the um, embarrassment of watching myself. So here's the next slide. Hello, brothers, and welcome to the that is enough. So you can watch that. Again, there's audio to that as well if you go to the fall mailer. Going to slide number three, this is a table of contents. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven items listed. First is opus and chapter reports. This is slides four through nine. Then we have membership dues and chapter fees as a second item, which is slides 10 through 14. The third item is changes to the national constitution, which is slides 15 through 16. Next, we have the new mission statement, which is slides 17 through 18. Then we have recruitment resources and chapter calendars, which is slides 19 through 22. Next, we have the meet your national leadership team, which is slides, our slides 23 through 28. And then lastly, important links and contact info, which are the last two slides of the deck 29 and 30. We're gonna move on to slide number four, which is a title slide uh, called part one, opus and chapter reports. Moving to slide number five, the title is new online membership system, opus, which is spelled O-P-U-S. So what is opus? Opus is Kappa Kappa Psi and Tau Beta Sigma's new online membership system and database. It is replacing the old system, which we called the OMRS, which stood for the Online Membership and Reporting System. And Opus itself, the new system, is based on the Salesforce platform. Now, all reports for chapters and forms that are required to be submitted to the national headquarters throughout the year these will now be completed and submitted through Opus, which is our new membership system. And at the end of the slide, there's a link that you can click to access or to um, get to the Opus page. But if you aren't able to see this, it is opus.kkytbs.org. Again, opus.kkytbs.org. So if you click on that, then you're able to access the login screen for Opus, and everyone should have received a, an email prompting them to create a profile. If not, please email kky at tbs.org. Okay. Moving on to slide number six, this here houses six, I'm sorry, five different videos, which are other walkthrough videos. And uh, the first one is logging in for the first time while well, logging into Opus for the first time. The next is the goes over the transition from OMRS to Opus. And on the bottom, there are the three other videos. They're broken down into three parts. The chapter personnel report is covered in part one, two, and three. Part one is submitting for approval. Part two is sponsor and DOB approvals. And part three is submitting to headquarters. So again, on slide number six, there are five total walkthrough videos that you can click and access more information um, and guidance through each of these components. Slide number seven talks about the difference in Opus. So what is the difference? The first question is who can create and submit forms to national headquarters? The response to that is, 
presidents, vice presidents membership, secretaries, treasurers, historians, and alumni relations officers. There's a special note here that director of bands and sponsors can also create and submit, submit forms if needed. This is a change because through OMRS, I believe anybody could have created and submitted forms, whereas in OPUS, it is the chapter officers and director of bands and sponsors who can do this. Next is the new signature process. Chapters are required to collect signatures for the chapter personnel report, or commonly known as the CPR, and the membership candidate registration, which is commonly known as MCR. Chapters will no longer be required to collect two sets or signatures for the new membership process. Members will receive an email notifying them that they need to log in to review and acknowledge fraternity policies. But if you encounter any issues with Opus, please contact Aaron Moore at more at kkytbs.org and Nicole Brooks at brooks at kkytbs.org at national headquarters. Slide number eight is broken down into two components. It talks through the CPR or the chapter personnel report, and then the other part, which is the chapter and I'm sorry, these officer and chapter updates. Now for the CPR or the chapter personnel report, prior to beginning the chapter personnel report, please have each of your members check their name, their email address and physical address in Opus for any needed corrections. Each member has their own account and should verify that the correct information is included on their profile. The CPR must be submitted by September 30th. This includes fees, signatures and approval from your DUB and chapter sponsor. Failure to submit this on time will cause a 25% late fee added to your total costs. <clears throat> the next part here, the officer and chapter updates. If your chapter has held elections prior to August 31, please make sure that the officer and chapter update is submitted and approved no later than August 31. Now, if you hold elections after September 1st, please submit the chapter, the officer and chapter update after the CPR has a status of transaction confirmed or transaction completed. Now, if you have any questions or issues, again, please contact Aaron Moore, Nicole Brooks at headquarters. Moving on to slide number nine, here we have chapter reports and deadlines. And here you'll have, you'll see two tables, but really it's broken down into three simple components, the form, online status, submission status, and then the deadline itself. So we have the chapter personnel report for semester schools. What we want to see uh, for the status is form and payment set to national headquarters. We wanna make sure that it is postmarked or set sent in before September 30th or by September 30th. Now the CPR or chapter personnel update for semester schools. Again, we wanna see the submission status of form and payment set to national headquarters. Now for the deadline, this form is only for status changes after dues have been submitted using a CPR. Again, we know we have the CPR, which is a chapter personnel report. And then we have the CPU, which is the chapter personnel update, right? So the chapter personnel update uh, with late fees, it only applies for members initially reported after the CPR deadline above. Now going through the same reports, but for quarter schools, the CPR, again, we wanna see that same status of form and payment submitted to national headquarters, but their deadline is a bit different. It's October 30th. The CPU, uh, very similar, October 30th, we wanna make sure that we see that um, as soon as possible. Late fees only apply for members initially reported after the CPR deadline. Now we have the membership candidate registration form or the MCR, the uh, same status. We wanna see that it says form and payment sent to national headquarters. The deadline is within seven days of first degree, okay? Then we have the initiate registration, which is slightly different. Again, we want to see that same form and payment sent to national headquarters, but the status or the deadline of it, we want to have it in with the signatures, with the form completed, with the um, the fiscal part as well, the monies as well, is 30 days after third degree. So you have membership candidate registration, which is seven days after first degree. Initiate registration is 30 days after third degree. And these are regular days, not business days. Okay. Then we have honorary initiation, which is 
very similar to the initiate registration form. Um, it is also within 30 days of third degree. Now, the next report we, has, we have is the fall activity report, uh, which we want to see it say DOB approved and submitted to headquarters. The deadline for this is by December, th sorry, is by December 1st, December 1. The spring activity report, which chapters um, will know formally known as the chapter summary report, this is due by June 1st. So you have your fall activity report, which is due by December 1, the spring activity report, which is due by June 1. Then we have our graduating senior report. This is within 30 days of graduation. So as soon as those senior, graduating seniors are um, are graduated, we want to make sure that by 30 days after that, that this form, this report is submitted. Then we have the chapter, I'm sorry, the officer and chapter update. This is as soon as possible after elections. For beginning of the year elections, you should wait until you submit the chapter personal report uh, and after it is confirmed and completed before you send that. Okay. And the last thing here is the podium article submissions. Um, if you want your article to be in the fall issue, please send it by May 1. If you want it in by the spring issue, please have it in by December 1. Okay. Next slide or slide number 10 is part two, which is membership dues and fees. Now for the membership dues and fees, slide number 11, it states that at the 2023 National Convention, the national delegation voted to adjust the membership dues and chapter fee structure for the 2023-2025 biennium to the following. For chapter fee, there's no change. We have $100 just as it was last biennium. On time or before the deadline, it is $100. If it is late, there's a 25% charge, which increases it to $125. The membership dues is 130. This is a $15 due increase compared to last biennium. Now, if that is late, it goes to $162.50. Initiate fee is $150, which is a $15 due increase or a $15 increase from last biennium. If it is late, it is $187.50. Honorary fee is similar to the initiate. It is $150, which is also a $15 increase from last biennium. And if it is late, it is also $187.50. Again, chapter fee is $100, membership due, The Membership dues is $130.130. Initiate and honorary fees are both $150 or $150. Now, slide number 12 is a bit of an explanation on why there was an adjustment. So it's slide number 12 states that based on the work of the National Committee on, on Ways and Means, the national delegation voted to increase dues by $15, 1.5. This increase was made to achieve the following. One, to offset significant increases in the fraternity's insurance costs, which are currently projected to rise by 15%, which is 1.5 as well. Number two is to sustain the funding of current national programs, including uh, and not limited to our scholarships, our leadership development initiatives, and our district and national conventions. And then finally, to provide for the continuation of our chapter field representative program or our CFRs. Slide number 13 is to, uh, goes over how to make payments to headquarters. Option one is to pay online. If you go to kksci.org, there is a form that there are a form payment gateway that you can submit payment to, uh, but please make sure that you attach the PDF that you are submitting the payment for. So that way we know what it is that you're paying for. Again, this website can be found or this form can be found at kkpsi.org slash form dash payment dash gateway. And that's, that can be found on a national website. Option number two is to call the national headquarters at 504-372-2333. Uh, before headquarters can accept payment, all signatures must be completed and the form must be approved by your DOB and sponsor. Once a signature has been completed, you'll, you're going to see in the report a check mark, check mark, which will appear in the acknowledgement status box, which can be seen to the right of the slide here. For those who uh, are not able to uh, see this visual, it is a screenshot of the report through Opus where it says acknowledgement status at the top. And then there's a little box underneath it that has a check mark. If you see that check mark, it is good. It is 
um, completed. If there's no check mark, that means it is incomplete and that we need to track down those individuals to confirm their signatures, okay? So again, that's option number two, which is to call headquarters 405-372-2333. Option three is to mail a check or money order. These should be made payable to Kappa Kappa Psi. And please mail it to Kappa Kappa Psi National Headquarters at P.O. Box 849 Stillwater, Oklahoma. Zip code is 74076. Please include a copy of the form or forms that you are paying for. And as always, please do not mail cash. Please do not mail cash. Please do not mail cash. You have three options to pay online, to call headquarters, or to mail a check or money order. All right. Slide number 14 states, it is strongly encouraged that dues and fees, along with correctly completed forms, should be submitted on or before September 15th of each year. Now, chapters that do not complete their online submission and submit fees by September 30th for semester schools or October 15th for quarter schools will immediately be placed on probation and must cease all activities until dues and fees are paid. The chapter personal report will be considered late and the chapter will be assessed a late fee of 25%, that's two five, of the total membership dues and chapter fees as of the date above. And lastly, on this slide, chapters that do not pay by January 1 will be suspended and may be removed from the roster of active chapters, meaning your chapter could lose its charter. All right, and this is outlined in our national constitution. Slide 15 is this title slide that says part three, changes to the national constitution. All right, slide number 16 gives an overview of what some of these changes were, uh, what some of these changes are and it states at the 2023 national convention the national delegation voted to revise the national constitution to one eliminate quote membership advisement as a status for chapters with few members while the national council considers new strategies and initiatives to assist these chapters two provide for the continued scheduling of initial joint and separate sessions at national convention during the final National Intercollegiate Band Rehearsal. Three, correct a section reference that was rendered incorrect by a previous amendment. Four, reflect the current process for reinstatement of active, sorry, of inactive members to alumni status. Next, remove the requirement for the National Committee on Nominations to hold at least one in-person meeting. And finally, clarify that the National Vice President for Professional Relations is appointed by the National President. At the bottom, there's a link for you to read more. This is a Google Doc that details more thoroughly what these changes were, uh, what the old language was, what the new language is, and the rationale. Slide number 17 is part four, new mission statement. Slide number 18 gives an overview or lists, um, states the new mission statement, which is, Kappa Kappa Psi is a diverse fraternity dedicated to advancing college and university bands for the benefit of its members and society through meaningful musical experiences and enrichment, transformational leadership development, purposeful service to bands and support to band members, and lifelong fellowship and community. You can see and find this new mission statement on our national website at kkpsi.org. Slide number 19 is a title slide, part five, recruitment, resources, and chapter calendars. Slide number 20 gives an overview of the Strive for Five initiative. During the 2023-2024 school year, chapters are highly encouraged to consider conducting recruitment activities to take membership classes. The National Council has created the Strive for Five recruitment resource program or initiative for you. Check out our National Activity Bank talking points and events slash communication templates. Visiting the following website for the most up-to-date information, which can be found on our national website, which is kksci.org slash curriculum and kksci.org slash recruitment. If you have any questions, you can email the curriculum committee 
uh, which is curriculum at kkpsi.org, our National Vice President for Membership and Expansion, or VPME, Dr. Nicholas Rohrer at NIC at kkpsi.org. Slide number 21 goes over the general policies when it comes to building out your chapter calendars. Number one is all chapters are required to submit a chapter calendar of recruitment events and road to wisdom activities each academic year. If you do not plan on doing anything, you need to also fill one out. Let us know that you aren't doing anything. Uh, that just makes sure that we can keep tabs on why, how can we best support you and make sure that you have the resources that you need for when you do decide to um, start with recruitment and membership intake. Policy number two is while it is not required for chapters to complete membership intake each year, we do recommend, highly, strongly recommend that chapters complete intake every year. Number three, all chapter calendars and activities, including any changes, must be reviewed and approved by your chapter's director of bands and sponsor prior to submitting it to the national leadership team. Number four, chapter calendars must be, must be submitted at least two weeks prior to the start of an event to allow for adequate time for review and approval. Number five is that chapter calendars and activities must be approved by the national leadership team in order for activity for chapters to move forward with any events or activities. Chapters that choose to start an, active, uh, an event or activity without the proper approval may result in disciplinary actions against the chapter. Now, if you have any questions, please reach out to your district governors the curriculum committee or Dr. Rohr if issues um, around event arise. Slide number 22 are important links for VPMs. We have listed review chapter calendar policies and procedures, which is, I just went with you in slide number 21, a few of the general policies, but there's a lot more uh, that everyone is encouraged to read, especially our VPMs, making sure that you review and carefully re carefully review and understand what the policies are. The second link here is to watch the VPM and Road to Wisdom training video. That was something that we hosted a few weeks ago, and it goes through a lot of important information for all chapter VPMs and all those involved in the educational slash recruitment process. So, uh, let's see, link number three is the link to submit your chapter calendar. This has been new and approved. Hopefully it is a lot easier um, compared to last biennium. Number four is to submit an activity review. Number five is to access the VPM resources folder. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out to your district governors, the curriculum committee, or Dr. Rohr if you have any questions or concerns. Part number six, or slide number 23, is part six, which is your, your national leadership team. Slide number 24, is the National Council, which is made up of myself, Bong T. Ko, National President and Ex Officio Member of the Board of Trustees. You have Dr. Nicholas Rohr, who is the National Vice President for Membership and Expansion. You have Brother Daniel Miller, who is the National Vice President for Programs. Brother Tarshay Odom, the National President for Student Affairs. You have Brother Dr. William Jr. Lake, sorry. Brother Dr. William Lake Jr., National Vice President for Professional Relations. You have Brother Jessica Lee, who is the immediate past national president, uh, who is an ex officio member of the council, which means non-voting. Doctor, You have Brother Dr. Melinda Matney, who is the chair of the Board of Trustees, also ex officio member of the National Council. And then Brother Marina Pinagio, who is the Alumni Association Board Director's Chair, also ex officio. Slide number 25 is made up of Dr. Melinda Matney, the chair of the Board of Trustees, Evan Thompson, the vice chair of the board of trustees. You have Dr. Kevin James, who is a member of the board of trustees. You have Eric Morrison, another member of the board of trustees, Jessica Lee, immediate past president and member of the board of trustees. And then myself, Bong T. Ko, national president and an ex officio member of the board of trustees, meaning non-voting. Now there is a call for nominations for the vacancy on the board of trustees. Uh, it was announced on August 11th, 2023. There is a link here on slide number 25 for you to go. Um, if you are curious, go to kkpsi.org slash 2023 BOT vacancy. Again, that can be found on our national website. Slide number 26 um, is an overview of the board of directors for the Alumni Association. You have Marina, who is the chair, Miranda Cook, who is vice chair and membership director, 
Dr. Donald Lee Jr., who is the music outreach director, Christopher uh, Giles, who is the awards and activities director. You have Dino, who is the uh, communications director. You have Brittany, who is the LAA director, Greg Boyke, who is the programs and professional development director, Michael Blander, the finance director. You have Eric Morrison, who is the Board of Trustees representative and ex officio member on the Alumni Association Board of Directors, and then myself, Bonti Co., as national president and an ex officio member of the Board of Directors. Slide number 27, you have our headquarters staff. We have Steve Nelson, who is the National Executive Director. You have Debbie Morris, who is the National Membership Services Coordinator. Aaron Moore, who is our National Database and Membership System Coordinator. TJ Tooley, the National Membership and Expansion Coordinator. Nicole Brooks, National Chapter Support Coordinator. Lisa Croston, Events Coordinator. Thomas Bradford, Publications Manager and Multimedia Designer. Kathy Webster, our Accounting Manager. And our two chapter field representatives or CFRs, Jake January and Kennedy Strupp. If you have any questions that you would like to reach out to headquarters about, please email kkytbs at kkytbs.org. All right, slide number 28 is an overview of all of our district governors. For the Midwest District, we have Denali, Dr. Walker, and Viet Nguyen. For the North Central, we have Mark Renault, Michelle Bannis, Akila Thomas. For the Northeast District, we have Versailles, Matt Parent, and Marcy Jones. For the Southeast District, we have Arupa, Calum, and JP Davis. For the Southwest District, Andy Melvin, Lizzie, and Kadeem. And then for Western District Governors, we have Lance, Carissa, and Brian. I also just realized that I went back and forth between reading people's first name, people's full names. I apologize. <laughs> Slide number 29. Part seven is important links and contact info. So that takes us to the last slide, which is slide 30. It has a number of links, which I believe are five links, and then four other links that take us to take you to our social media profiles and pages. To go over the links, we have our risk management policies. This is something that everyone, all active brothers must go through each and every year, especially with our membership candidates. We have our report a problem link. We have our national KKSI website link, link to our national headquarters page, and then to submit a link to submit a chapter assistance ticket or request ticket. If you have any need to reach out to our headquarters, they are hours of operations are Monday through Friday, excluding any national holidays or weather inconvenience days. Um, but again, they are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. Their address is P.O. Box 849 Stillwater, Oklahoma 74076. Phone number is 405-372-2333. Again, general questions can be emailed to kkytbs at kkytbs.org. Now, Again, I recognize that this was just a lot of me reading off the slides, and this is not a presentation. Uh, this is more so just a an audio walkthrough. So I hope this is helpful for, the, for folks who do need this tool. If there are other things that you would like us to do a an audio walkthrough of, please let us know, and we uh, will do our best to accommodate those needs and those requests. Uh, but again, if you have any questions, please always feel free to reach out. My email is president at kkpsi.org. Again, thank you so very much for taking the time to watch this video. Thank you for taking the time to share this video for brothers who do need this resource. And thank you for your constant support um, and your hard work and your service to college and university bands. Uh, this is a, a great time for us to really solidify who we are as brothers, who we are as a fraternity and reaffirm our dedication to our values, to our mission, to our vision, and just overall our love for one another and our love for music. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Bonco. If you have any questions, please reach out. I'm going to stop this recording now because at this point, I'm just rambling. Uh, thank you so very much, brothers, as always, AEA, and I hope to connect with you all soon. Thank you.